hopefully it works. Great. Great, we're recording. So another Love Prevails conversation. Uh, this is our third time talking together and we're continuing the, conver the questions we're gonna reflect on. Uh, we're gonna have, try to have a shorter conversation this time, unless we're just too brilliant, we can't stop talking, which sometimes happens. <laughs> and uh, the questions building on you know, where we've been, questions for this time are, what personal risks have we been too afraid to take? Something like that. And what so ones are what, willing? What personal we've been afraid to take? And then we found connected to that is the question of how would we act if we were free? How would we behave if we were free? I guess if we weren't bound by fear. So they, they go together. Uh, so starting with uh, what, what have we been too afraid to do? How have we been limited by our own fear? I'll share uh, something <laughs> just like we rehearsed. Uh, it's just a, a very obvious generic thing. I've been afraid to do more. I've been afraid to push more. I've been afraid to, to uh, risk. Specifically, I've been uh, limited by my fear around how personal relationships will be hampered by my um, activity with Love Prevails, my activity to try to uh, change the United Methodist Church, try to resist the injustice of our homophobic policies. Uh, just a brief example, um, I was just recently talking with some other clergy and someone was quite optimistically sharing their hopes for the general conference. And I said, uh, I don't think we stand a chance. I don't think there's, uh, you know, I don't think there's any chance things will turn out differently at this next general conference. They never have before. It's the same people voting. It's voting on the same stuff. And the person I was speaking to who had shared the optimism of, um, you know, changing hearts and minds one person at a time, more or less, said, that makes me so sad. That makes me feel so powerless. And, you know, in a way, I kind of felt bad for that person. And I also thought, yeah, you know, when I go around saying stuff like this, um, it has cons it, 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 it impacts people, it has consequences. And, and I thought maybe this is one of those moments where sometimes I'm just too afraid to speak my truth, not that I know what's going to happen, but uh, I thought the person also felt like um, I was being negative or maybe I was being hurtful to them or I was wounding their faith somehow. Um, but in general, uh, you know, what have I been afraid to do? Um, and how, how have I been limited by fear? My response is yes. You know, it's, um, it can be scary. Uh, it is scary and there are consequences just for uh, being trying to be motivated by justice in relationships and in the church. What would you do if you were free? I'd hurt everyone's feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think if I were free, I wouldn't be, um, I, I would be less afraid of pain mm -hmm. for myself and for other people. Um, I'd be more open to, to experiencing the pain I, I experience that I'm, that's out there and also that I know other people, including people I love, um, are gonna have to experience. So, you know, if I were more free, uh, I think I would be, uh, I would, I, I'd have, I'd truly have more hope in the sense that I, my pain uh, and our pain would, is not what would determine the end of, you know, the, wouldn't guide the trajectory that I'm mm -hmm. trying to live into. Yeah, I, I'm um, surprised by your answer, actually. That's interesting. I don't think yeah. people in general would perceive you that way, right? But I'm surprised that that's the answer that you came up with. And but, I mean, maybe part of the reason I'm surprised is the way you articulate it helps me to articulate um, one of the risks I wish I'd taken more, which somewhat relates, which is actually I wish that I had pushed our group internally more mm -hmm. to take more risks um, and to to take more responsibility in some certain cases um, for some of the things that we've done. And I think that I didn't do that because I didn't want to risk relationships, right. right? That's something that echoes in there, but I'm just talking internal to our group. I think I could have pushed more. Um, and I, I echo some of what you say about the other relationships in the conference and stuff like that, but I have a little less of that, I think going internally. Um, and then the other answer is I feel like if I took more risks, um, I would probably leave, would have left the church now 
by now that I think I've, you know, despite again, how people may perceive me, um, you know, still found safety and security in this denomination. And that if I were more free, um, and you know, I think there's a lot in that f freedom. Freedom comes with responsibility, right? So um, that probably if I felt more free to leave, I would have left by now. I want to second that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's me. Yeah. We're trying to keep it short. How about people who aren't in my bedroom? Who aren't? <laughs> I'm aware for myself that there's a, a connection with physicality. Um, when things get tense in terms of um, differences of opinion, I pretty quickly go back to an early experience in my own life of being caught in the police riot in 1968 at the Democratic Convention. Whoa. And um, uh, that is sort of a built-in automatic flashback for me. Um, and um, the only recourse at that point uh, was pulling out some old football moves and getting away from police truncheons a, a yard away um, and um, just running. And that's, that's still with me. Um, and so when it comes to the, the, the physical stuff, um, I think I can take care of myself in terms of a one-on-one -on -one kind of uh, fight if that's what it came to. The old tapes of judo classes and boxing classes and all that would probably just come back. But um, it, it's still a, a, a knee-jerk reaction for me when it um, gets to be that moment. Um, I, in some sense, I betrayed the group uh, through not being able to, to risk being in the room uh, all that much when Julie was doing the chanting early on. Um, it was very close to a door. I was just aware of my surroundings and, and all of that. So there's just basic physicality uh, enters into it for me beyond the relationship stuff that is also true. Um, but it's this is more in the reptilian brain. <laughs> And does that relate to freedom? How you might, is the, do you think the physicality relates to how you'd behave if you were free or not? Is that someplace else? Um, yeah, it, it's very much connected. Um, and so I don't put myself in certain positions, um, just anticipating um, what might be going down. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's one of those tricky things because, um, I'm also known as somebody who's willing to, to, to say and do stuff and to be on the edge um, in a different kind of way, more in language than in, mm -hmm. in presence. So it, it's, uh, it gets tricky in there. Um, so I, it's, it's been helpful to, to be pushed by our disrupt slogan. <laughs> What, what does disrupt mean? And so I can fantasize with the best about what that might mean. Um, question is whether about any follow through. So uh, anyway, onward, time is fleeting, somebody else. I have difficulty with people being angry with me. Um, I don't like confrontation and I found I really have to push myself to stay in those moments um, when we are confrontational. There haven't been that many of them. Um, and when what you said, Julie, about if you were free, you'd probably have left a long time ago. I think that that's what I would risk is, uh, if I were to leave, is letting people down who I don't want to let down. I don't, I, the only reason I stay in the United Methodist Church is that I don't want it to be taken over and lost and have people left behind, if that makes any sense. So it's, I, I would risk 
the guilt of knowing that I had left people behind who really needed us to stay in the struggle. Otherwise, it would be pretty easy to walk away. I think where I have run into the most difficulty has to do with thinking about uh, doing disruptive things to things that involve property that would also impact other folks who maybe just got caught in the in the activity in some way. Some of the things that we um, we have considered are really reasonable and attractive and um, and still there's something about a line there somewhere that is um, it's a a block of some sort for me. Mm -hmm. I grew up a uh, really well, and I, I really struggle with rules because I like rules and I like order. <laughs> so for me, when you don't follow the rules, I get really stressed out. And so um, a lot of the direct action is not following the rules, right? Uh, and I, I've pushed myself <laughs> to do some of that. Um, but in general, that's been a really hard challenge for me because I am... Um, employed by an institution that's supported by the United Methodist Church, like so many of us. And um, so much of that uh, just brings fear about within me. And I think um, I would hope that if I was not bound by some of that, that I would work to be more free and work to be more open to those experiences. Because when I have participated in them, I have felt those moments of freedom. And I know I'm missing out on that and, and what that could mean for me in my life. And so that's something I want to continue to commit to doing. I guess I'm the only one left. I, I don't know when I have an answer. Uh, I, my head gets hung up on um, what would help what would be successful. Um, I know we talked a lot about success being about faithfulness, but I, I do not know anymore what would help turn this church around. I don't know how to get people to care. I don't, um, I don't know how to make people, uh, I don't you know, not make people, but I don't know how to convince people uh, that this should matter to the church. And by this, I mean, you know, LGBTQ equality and freedom. So I, I'm having a hard time separating what I'd do if I were free to do anything from I have no idea what would work. So I think that's a sign of my despair. Could also be a sign of your freedom and the fact that you haven't been too bound. Don't know. Yeah. Uh, so these questions again came from uh, came to me from a, a, a panel at my annual conference meeting where bishops were talking about um, I guess the future of the denomination you know code language for LGBTQ people and how we're treated by the church and uh, it was really a uh, a love fest celebrating these liberal bishops on how they've been prophetic voices. And uh, I was really frustrated by that um, because these bishops have not been prophetic voices at all. They've been huge obstacles to justice and um, very, <laughs> very, very harm. They've done a lot of harm to people up on the stage. Uh, so this, that's just part of, I, I said these questions weren't geared towards them because I didn't want to hear from them, but wanted to hear from other people who are in the church. But honestly, uh, this kind of was for them. Like, haven't you, isn't there anything you've been bound by? You know, isn't there anything you've been too afraid to risk? Um, it just seemed like such an obvious, 
human question to ask of someone who you're in relationship with, you know, to just get honest about it. Um, and so much of the time we have to, like Amy was saying, try to be successful, try to figure out what's going to work, be the ones to try to, uh, to turn this thing around. Uh, then I just think it's good for us to try to take some time uh, to ask this sort of question. Mm -hmm. um, I go back to that. I mean, this is, I've come to believe this is stupid, um, but it goes back to that, uh, that Wesleyan small group vulnerability conversation uh, meeting, whatever, uh, you know, with other people who you share common values with and who you're in covenant with, um, which I don't, you know, I don't really think, I don't know if it ever did happen. I know it doesn't happen now. Um, but I think there's something to that. You know, just being on, and it doesn't have to be Wesleyan or Methodist, but just, you know, being honest and vulnerable and exploring uh, what you're carrying and how this, how these experiences are for you. I th so if anybody listens to this, and I think we had 2,200 people listen to our last episode, <laughs> many, uh, listen to this, but, you know, to think about whether, I don't know if you have people to have these sorts of conversations with, but find them and also really invite, uh, you know, invite people in, including people who want to um, not be real, <laughs> you know, to try to find space. I think it's good. Even yeah. with, go ahead, Julie. No, you go ahead. I was just going to reflect that even with all these different responses that we have that grow out of our own personal experiences and, and the the edges that we've got, the blockages that we've got, somehow or other, something has happened. And we've come together and I at least feel like we've, we've stretched further, I've stretched further within the group than I thought that I could have. And mm. we've made a difference. Um, so even with all these built-in resistances, um, something has called We've heard something larger than ourselves. Um, don't want to go overboard on that, uh, but the, the the sense is that, yeah, um, the disruption has been a vocation, um, a vocational call and change. Um, and I think that's uh, been effective. So just thank you for, battling through whatever you have to battle through and putting up with my resistances where they show up as well. Yeah, and I, yeah, I feel that way too. Like, <laughs> oh. But I mean, I think we should, that if, uh, I was thinking about the language of successfulness and effectiveness, and I think, I believe in that. I wish we had tried to be more strategic many times. At the same time, like my response to that now, given the circumstances that we're in is like, Okay, so the people are like the one church plan to me is an attempt to be effective. So let's definitely not try and be effective, you know. Um, like, um, right? What's what's the what's the least we can accept? What what can we do to get the least we can possibly accept? Is how I see the one church plan, right? So that would be effective to keep the denomination together. So I mean, for us ourselves, I think a good question is like. What would it mean for us to act without any interest in success and effectiveness or even impact? Because I know we have made a difference till now, but if this situation is as lost as it is and there's as little chance to make an impact as there may possibly be because of, well, we all know how it is. And still then, what would we do if, if we really are that free to not even have to try and be effective or successful? What do we want to do? How do we want to show up? Because we are going to show up from what I can tell. That's still a commitment of ours. Yep. So, excellent. Well, we're at 20 minutes. <laughs> Other things or? Thanks for the conversation. Thanks.